Yo, what's up? Circus Score here. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we are going to be reviewing the new update of Lossless Scaling. Now, I'm a little late to the game on this update. This update did come out on June 11th, and I'm just now getting around to performance testing this new update. This is update 3.2, not to be confused with the new Lossless Scaling Frame Generation 3.1 that was included in the 3.2 update. Now, this update introduces significant and architectural improvements as you can see here and the one thing that i notice i've already done some pre-testing on this app is the image quality and like they said they're trying to focus on image quality as well as performance gains and they've done a pretty good job with both of those so the quality improvements here it enhances the overall image quality within a specific timestamp range most noticeable impact in adaptive mode and high multiplier fixed modes and improve the quality at lower flow scales reduce ghosting and i'll say this right now the ghosting has been improved significantly like much better than the last update whereas like the last update i could even see a little ghosting even around the edges of the screen this one i can barely even see it with some of the new modes that they've introduced Reduce object flickering, so that's another image quality improvement. Improve border handling and refined UI detection. And then there's also a new performance mode that focuses on reducing the GPU load reduction, but at the same time, it is gonna decrease the image quality of the new lossless scaling frame generation 3.1. And for those of you that are not familiar with lossless scaling, lossless scaling is an incredible app that I've reviewed multiple times just because it's such a great app it's something that you can buy on steam for around i think seven dollars and sometimes it goes on sale but what lossless scaling allows you to do is it allows you to activate an unofficial version of frame generation as well as different types of upscaling techniques within an app that scales your monitor screen so it's a pretty awesome app for what it costs overall it's one of my favorite apps to use and it doesn't have to just be used in gaming as well you can use it with video you can use it with emulation that's a good use case like if you have a game that's locked at 30 and you're trying to get 60 out of it that's a good use case but today we're just going to be testing out lossless scaling on a standard video game and just kind of see what kind of improvements we're seeing with the image quality on the new update. So launching lossless scaling here, like I said, there's a few new settings. So right here, your frame generation type is now lossless scaling frame generation 3.1 from 3.0. Now 3.0 is not even available anymore, but doesn't matter because 3.1 is excellent. And then I'm just gonna be in this case testing this out with a fixed mode of 2x and then your flow scale here this gives you a rundown of where you want your flow scale to be based on your resolution in my case it says for 4k gaming to keep it at 50 percent so i'm going to go ahead and do that just keep it at 50 percent and then this is that new performance mode that we were talking about earlier in the update notes faster version of lossless scaling frame generation which is better suited for less powerful gpus so in my case i am running a pretty heavy duty gpu GPU. So I'm going to keep this off for now, but we'll do some testing to see how much it affects performance later on in the video. And then if you're unfamiliar with some of these settings, I'll just run through these real quick. You've got your capture API. So there's two different ones here. There's WGC and DXGI. Now, in my case, I'm running the latest version of Windows, and they still recommend to use WGC with Windows 11 24H2. If you're running a version that is older than that, you can try to use DXGI. So that's the other option here for your capture API. And then your Q target. This is also a fairly new setting. I'm just gonna keep it at one. That's a good balance for my GPU. Keep clip cursor on. I'm gonna keep all of these off here. Scaling type. This is for if you wanted to use kind of any of the upscaling techniques. I'm not gonna be using any of these for this video. However, if you are interested, some of the better ones to look at are FSR and then lossless scaling one. Those are probably the two best upscaling techniques. And if I do click onto one of these, there are some different settings that you can change such as a sharpness turn on off performance mode so on and so forth but in this case i'm just testing out the new lossless scaling 3.1 today and then moving down here your sync mode just keeping that default max frame latency i'm going to keep that at three that is also the default and then if you have an hdr monitor you want 
kick that on. I am recording this in SDR for the sake of YouTube. So I'm gonna have that turned off. Then G-Sync support, want that on. And then draw FPS. This will be able to show us our FPS in the top left corner of our screen. And then this is also a fairly new setting here, GPU and display. So you can use different GPUs. In this case, it's seeing that I have a 4080 Super, but it's also recognizing that I have an AMD CPU with onboard graphics. And unfortunately for 4K, I don't think this is gonna be good enough to use lossless scaling, but we're gonna test that out in the video as well. All right, so here we are in game and I'm be using a highly modified version of Skyrim called Nulvis. It's a mod list that contains over 3000 different mods, including visuals and different quests and all kinds of stuff. And I like to use this specific mod list because running these at 4K, you can see in the top left corner of my screen, I've got an overlay and it is using 100% of my GPU usage. I'm also running this at 4K. So right now you can see on my overlay, I'm getting about 52 FPS. This is with lossless scaling turned off. So in this game specifically, when I'm running this on the ultimate 4K profile, even with a 4080 Super and a 9800X3D and 32 gigs of RAM, I still cannot get 60 FPS, which is where lossless scaling comes into play. So moving back over to the app here, I'm going to keep all these settings as is. And one thing to keep in mind, I did not mention this in my last video, but there is a shortcut. So control alt S is the default shortcut in order to run or scale right here. Otherwise, if you hit the scale button, you have five seconds to get to your window before it kicks in. So I hit the scale button here. And wait a few seconds and there you go you can see in the very top left corner where it added its little draw overlay that we are now getting 85 fps and i will say that this looks absolutely fantastic like the ghosting has almost been completely eliminated which is just crazy to me and now we're getting like a nice butter smooth 85 fps and you can see my gpu usage is changing a little bit so it's kind of kicking down to about 96 or so got to take out an enemy here got him i don't know why they weren't really fighting back but anyway yeah as i'm running through here i'm getting about like 95 fps and again the image quality just looks absolutely amazing. Like, I can't even see any ghosting. And prior in the lossless scaling 3.0 update, you could even see ghosting on my overlay. Like the metrics on the overlay as I was moving around, like the frame time, as well as the FPS and some of the other metrics would start to kind of blur as I like would start like running like this. And actually, let's get it to be a little, a little brighter out here so we can get some better visuals all right there we go so this is riverwood now we're getting about 100 fps and again the image quality is just absolutely amazing now if you do have a gpu that like they said is not as high end we go back to our scaling here let's unscale we can go ahead and look at this option here the performance option and check that on so with performance profile on at 2x, the ghosting is still pretty minimal, but it is increased just a little bit. As you can see, some of the icons are flickering a little bit in the bottom left corner. So now let's go back and do that setting here. And I'm just going to go ahead and turn off that performance profile and let's kick it up to 3x. Unscale, rescale. So now we're going for 3x and this is where like additional input latency as well as additional ghosting typically comes into effect. Now even at 3x the ghosting is not bad at all with that performance profile turned off. You can kind of see sometimes it kicking in when I'm looking at my overlay or running around. Now again let's go back in here let's unscale and then turn on performance mode and then rescale and there it goes. And you can kind of notice, I don't know if the capture card's able to pick this up or not, 
but you can start to notice that there's a little bit more ghosting going on when we kick in that performance profile, unfortunately. The one last thing I thought to test, because this does improve the amount of resources required to run lossless scaling, I thought, okay, well, maybe I can finally use that dual GPU function and use my integrated graphics. However, unfortunately, even at 2x, and I scale, I just change this here to the AMD Radeon graphics. And I said, okay, I'm going to keep performance profile on and just hope this worked because in the last update, I could not get integrated graphics to work. And unfortunately, even at 4K, it's just not really a feasible solution. You can see it's kind of like stuttering around and in the top left corner, it says we're at 30 slash 61 so it's trying to get to that 60 fps but we're just getting a ton of stutters so i'm kind of hoping that in the future when lossless scaling 3.2 comes out or uh lossless scaling frame generation even 4.0 comes out that maybe we'll be able to get this to be efficient enough to be able to run this on integrated graphics and then we don't have to worry about using any of our resource headroom for our primary dedicated graphics card because yeah this is unfortunately unplayable and i was having a little better luck with dxgi but even then it was still just not a feasible solution for the type of performance that we're looking for so i'm just going to change it back to this 4080 super unscale and then we'll do one last test here at 4x and i think that's about as far as i can push it while also running this mod list at a hundred percent gpu and actually let's go back and turn off performance mode i want to turn that off so i want to see how it looked because the reason we're doing all this testing is purely for the visuals because the ghosting has been greatly reduced there we go. It says 50 out of 180. And that's kind of where, like I said, where it's capping it because I'm using too much GPU resources on my system running this at 4K. But even at 4X, we're barely seeing any ghosting. So this is just absolutely awesome. And even just doing sword slashes in the past, there was like a ton of ghosting. You can see the sword even like kind of glitching out. And even at 4x, this still looks pretty solid. Could look a little better, honestly, but that is where you're going to see some of the biggest problems is where you start going like really high on that frame gener on the multi frame generation. And as for input latency, so you can see that the render latency has been going up a little bit. So it's sitting at about like 27 and when we're unscaled it's about 16 milliseconds. Unfortunately, I don't have any easy way to measure input latency, but it will increase your input latency a little bit. But in single player games, I really don't notice a huge difference. You wouldn't want to use this with a multiplayer game, but single player games, it's 100% manageable even at 4X. And if you guys know how to measure input latency, with lossless scaling, let me know down below in the comments. I would actually be very interested to know that. But anyway, that'll do it for this video. I just wanted to run through this quick update of lossless scaling 3.2. I do a lot of different content such as mod list reviews, Skyrim modding. Eventually one of these days I'll get into them some Fallout modding or cyberpunk, PC optimization tips, stuff like that. So if any of that interests you, consider subscribing to the channel. And as always, have a wonderful day.